Hello, welcome to the Thursday, August 18th, 2022 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and I'm yet again recording from Jacksonville, Florida, which you may be able to tell by the thunderstorm and rain in the background. These last couple days, I spent some time looking at zip traffic to play with the Realtek SDK vulnerability. And as part of uh, this sort of overall experiments, I also set up a quick Asterix server. What surprised me, and I guess should not have surprised me, was how much this increased the voice over IP scanning traffic that was seen by this server. Now, Voice over IP or SIP traffic is quite commonly being used to scan random systems. It often makes one of the top 10 ports in our list. But as soon as I set up this server, the number of hits per IP went up easily by a factor of 100. And this was a very simple setup. The server didn't really allow any phone calls. It just sort of was basically just accepting packets and returning uh, permission denied. Now, there were sort of two kinds of attacks or scans that I noted. Uh, one was where basically someone just tried to call a number via my server. The second one was where they actually tried to register an extension with this voice over IP server, which then, of course, would have allowed them to impersonate whatever company runs that particular server. And the two most called numbers also sort of matched a common exploit activity that's seen in exposed voice over IP servers. One number was uh, in the Palestine territories. Quite often in areas like this that are sort of not included in unlimited uh, calling plans and such, people still worry about the cost of calls. And of course, that leads to them attempting to use unprotected voice over IP servers. The second one was a number in Chicago. This may have been attempt sort of to use it for scam calls, of course, using some badly configured voice over IP server makes it easier to hide the true identity of the scammer and also makes it less likely that the scammer is then shut down. And we got zero days today. Uh, today we received a few interesting updates all patching actively exploited vulnerabilities. Let's start with Apple. Apple updated macOS Monterey and uh, iOS as well as iPad OS and this update fixed two vulnerabilities and only two vulnerabilities. Both of these vulnerabilities are already actively being exploited. Not a lot of details here, of course, as typical for Apple. One of these vulnerabilities is in WebKit and allows for arbitrary code execution as the victim is visiting a particular website. The second one is then a kernel problem that allows for privilege escalation. So if you're connecting those two vulnerabilities, a user visits a malicious website, the attacker will be able to execute code as root. It's not clear if older versions of macOS are affected as well. What Apple typically does with these WebKit vulnerabilities is that they will later release an update for Safari that fixes these WebKit issues for older operating systems. And Google released Google Chrome 104 and it does fix a number of critical and medium flaws, but it also does address a vulnerability that's already been exploited. So that's sort of our second or third, if you count Apple as two, zero day being patched today. Now the third item here is not exactly a zero day, but it's a vulnerability in Cisco equipment that wasn't sort of properly patched recently. Rapid7 researcher Jacob Baines did discover the vulnerability. And the problem here essentially is that an administrator, if they're connecting uh, to a malicious adaptive secure device manager or ASDM uh, server, well, uh, that malicious server can then execute arbitrary code 
on the administrator's workstation. Now, you would expect there is some kind of certificate set up or so to make sure that you're connecting to the correct server. Apparently, that hasn't been done properly by Cisco. There was an update released last week when this was first announced, and Jacob also released a exploit tool called Stay, Stay, Stay. The fix that Cisco applied was that it will now give you a pop-up warning when you're connecting, but that pop-up warning will just tell you that the version of the ASDM server is out of date. It also suggests patching, so let's hope that uh, this will prompt a Cisco administrator into maybe look closer, but by the time you connect it, it's pretty much already too late. Of course, one big hurdle here to overcome is that the administrator first needs to connect to the malicious server using that client. Well, and that's it for today. Thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.